In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create an interactive image map inside of Elementor Page Builder using Adobe Illustrator. To get started with our interactive image map for Elementor Page Builder, the first thing I'm going to do is download a vector file from FreePick. You can download a vector file from whatever website you want or even create your own vector file using Adobe Illustrator. So over here I'm going to search for Canary Island and in the resources over here I'm going to filter it only for vector files. Click the search button and here are my results. So I'm going to go for this one which is a map of the Canary Islands and I'm going to download that to my computer. Once the download is done, double click on the folder and open the EPS file inside of Adobe Illustrator. So you are going to need to know how to use Adobe Illustrator to use this technique for creating a interactive image map. Over here in Adobe Illustrator, I'm going to delete all the different parts that I don't need inside of my interactive map and I'm going to leave only the parts that I need so let's close a couple of these windows so we'll have it a little cleaner and this is the map that I need I don't need the labels here we go this is the map so first of all before we continue and I start explaining how to create hotspots on this map what I'm going to do is I'm going to minimize my artboard to only the contains of the map itself. So click over here, edit art boards. And in preset, I'm going to choose fit to artwork bounds. That will eliminate all the transparent parts around of the map and leave only the map itself. Click once on the map and right click to ungroup. And now the map is separated into different parts. Click on the part that you want to create into an interactive link inside of your Elementor website. And in window, go to attributes. So over here we have attributes. Inside of the attributes pane, click on the hamburger menu and then select show all. More options will open up for you and in image map, you're going to want to select rectangular or polygon. It doesn't really matter. You can select whatever you want. So over here in URL, we can put the URL. We want this part of the map to open. So for example, I'm going to open facebook.com and another part of the map will make it a hotspot to lead us to a different section inside of the website. So to lead to a different section, we're going to use hashtag and we'll call it section number two. So this, when clicking on this, it will scroll down to section number two. Perfect, I think we got everything set up and now we need to save this. So file, save as, and over here I'm going to select SVG in the format and click save. Now, you don't need to really save this. All you want to do is take the SVG code. So you can click on SVG code over here and copy this part and jump into your browser. So this is the code of the file itself. Over here inside of Elementor, I'm going to search for HTML widget and drag that inside of my empty column inside of an empty section. Paste my code over here, and as you can see, we have an interactive map over here, which is really awesome. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to edit the CSS a little bit. Now, since it's kind of hard editing it over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a website that's called CodePen. And inside of CodePen, it's just sort of like an HTML editor. If you have one installed on your computer then you can use that but over here it's pretty simple so I'm gonna paste that and we're just going to test this out and see how it's working so 
The nice part when exporting an SVG from Illustrator is that you can still control the colors over here. So for example, if I want to change the fill color, then I can do that. And if I want to change the stroke to 10 pixels, I can change it to 10 pixels. And that's what's nice about CodePen is that you can see everything live and it's a nice code editor. I'm going to duplicate the CSS and add a hover state. So let's add a hover state over here. And in our hover state, what I'm going to do is change the background fill to maybe let's say yellow, just for example purposes, it doesn't really matter. Let's let that load. And now when I hover over the different sections, it's really interactive. So let's copy this again. And over here, I'm gonna replace it with the code and everything's working. Now to test this, I'm gonna click update and I will click preview to preview the page. Let's see this in the live view. So over here, this is supposed to open up Facebook. Let's click on that. And now you can see that we got an error. It's showing a broken image over here. To change that setting, we're going to jump into the hamburger menu. And over here, we want to select site settings. This will open our global settings for the site. And down here, we have an option for light box. So I'm gonna click on that. And over here, you can see image light box is selected. So I'm just gonna turn that off. It's turned on by default. So this can be a little bit uh, misleading to some people. I'm going to jump back into my website and it's refreshed automatically. And now again, I'm gonna click on the same interactive part of my interactive map and you can see it's leading to Facebook. So perfect. Jump back and now the next one that we're going to do is this one that's supposed to lead to a different part of our website. So for it to lead to a different part of our website, we need to exit our site settings. So click exit over here and let's add a new section by clicking the plus. Okay, before we can drag, we need to add something over here. So let's just drag in an empty title. Perfect, let's center it. And now we can reorder our sections. Perfect. So this section, let's make it height fit to screen and give it a background color just so it's so prominent, a little bit more prominent for the example purposes. So what we want is that when you click over here, that will scroll down to this part. After you change the background color, jump into the advanced tab and over here in CSS ID, we want to give the same name that we added with the hashtag before. Click update to save. And now we're going to test this. So let's jump into our front end and hover over the correct part. Click on that. And as you can see, now it's jumping down to the second part that we wanted it to jump to. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and I'm gonna see you in the next video.